In this video, we will be processing Red Edge MX data from a Microsense camera in Pix4D Mapper. So first, we will create a new project. You will need to save a new folder on your computer where the project will live. give your project a name and then we will import all of our imagery so these steps will apply to all cameras for Microsense, including the red edge 3 red edge m red edge mx altum and the dual camera system and here we can see all the bands on the camera and the various images here we can choose our coordinate system if we want to. We want to choose the AG multispectral template. And now you can see the location of all of our images. There's one thing we want to change, however, we want to radiometrically correct the imagery. So let's go into processing options and go to the index calculator tab, and it will automatically find a calibration panel from your flight. And you just want to make sure that it, it filled in the values for the albedo values for your panel. And in this case, we will be processing using panel data as well as DLS2 data. However, if you just want to use panel data on a sunny day, for example, you can just choose camera only for all of these options. And we can click around and see the other options available in the software. In this case, we only want a reflectance map outputted, so we don't need to choose any other options before processing. We can start the processing and it takes quite a while, but we've sped it up here for your convenience. You can see the quality report that is outputted. And now we can see all of the images on our computer that have been created in the tiles folder of your project directory. So let's go there. So now we can see all of the tiles in our the reflectance folder of the project directory. So we can copy the directory over to our OSGO for W shell and we can see all of the different tiles that have been created for our project in the reflectance folder. And I like to just copy paste these GDAL commands over from our knowledge base for convenience. And these will create single virtual raster files for each band. And then we will use the GDAL command again to combine all of these virtual raster layers into one multi-band raster layer that we can use to analyze the data. And now if we look again, we can see we've got these virtual raster files for the bands. And then we also have the reflectance BRT we also created. So that's the file we will be opening in QGIS. And here we are in QGIS. We want to add a new raster layer. We just want to find the folder with our new VRT we created. And here it is. However, we need to reorder the bands so that it, it's in RGB order. So we'll change band, the red band to band three, green band to band two, and the blue band to band one. And I find that changing the Val the min max values to 
to correspond to the highest value and the lowest value or zero helps make the composite look a little better, but you can experiment uh, depending on the reflectance data in your data set to see what looks best. And you can just play around with the QGIS settings to, to see what min-max values they determine are appropriate. And we can zoom in 100% here and see the data at its full resolution. And then we can zoom out. And again, we can change these min-max values to whatever we think looks best. It doesn't look too bad. So let's, maybe we'll change it a little bit more to make it a little brighter. And let's go ahead and use the raster calculator to do a common workflow, which would be creating the NDVI map. So you can see here the band order should be blue, green, red, red edge, and near infrared. So we can use those bits of information to create our NDVI map using the formula shown on screen. And we need to choose output file location. And this will export a single band image with your reflectance values, or rather your NDVI values, as opposed to the multi-band reflectance map we're currently working with. And here we are, it's showing a single band gray style. So we can change that to single band pseudo color to give it a little bit more flavor. And here up to your discretion, you can change the min max values to correspond to your data set. But already you can see that the road here is red because there is not any vegetation in the road. And the buildings here as well are, are turning out red, to be red. And the common NDVI range is negative one to one. However, depending on what you're doing, you may want to change this to bring out more information. And that's it. Thanks for watching our video. And we're going to try to create some more videos in the future that will help you out. And feel free to leave any comments or send any emails to support at micastance.com if you have any more questions. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.